for a given matrix, for a given a, an n times m matrix, we can form uh, matrix vector products as long as x is uh, a vector from the Rm. And in this way, if we do this for any vector, we get a transformation or a mapping from Rm to Rn. And this mapping is called a linear transformation. Such mappings from Rm to Rn are called a linear transformation if these can be written as a matrix vector product. For some n times m matrix A and all vectors A, x in Rm. So A is an n times m matrix and x is a vector in Rm, so we yield actually A. A times x is indeed a vector in Rn. So notice that um, the notion of a linear transformation or the linear mapping is different from that we, uh, from what we uh, considered in calculus. Since over there we had we would have the linear function f x is a times x plus b. So, which would amount to saying that, well, a linear transformation would be in this notion, tx is a times x plus a vector y. But the distinction now is that such a mapping is called affine, and not linear. So, what is also important here is to stress that t and a are different mathematical objects. Yeah, T is truly a mapping. Yeah, there's uh, some tool from which we create out of a vector in Rm, a new vector in the Rn. And A is a rectangular, no more than a rectangular table with numbers. A is a matrix which can be considered in itself doing nothing. So look at the following example. Suppose you want to transfer some money using another one's account and you need a PIN to do so. Well, you could in fact ask for the direct PIN, but due to security measures you want your pin to be coded. Well, suppose your pin equals 7241, so it's a four digit number. So the first number is denoted by x1, x2, x3, and the fourth number by x4. And you decode, you, you encode it. You change your number. Instead of 7241, you send, well, the first number will be no more than the sum of the first two numbers, the second is the sum of the, uh, uh, the second and the third, the third of the third and the fourth, and the last one is just x1 minus x4. So we have here x1 plus x2, x2 plus x3, and we have finally here x1 minus x4. So in this way you obtain a new code. So if you start off with some code x1, x2, x3, x4, you get a new result. You get a new code y, which is a vector with four components. And y is constructed as follows. So the first coordinate is here, over here, x1 plus x2. The second is x2 plus x3. x3 plus x4. And finally, we obtain minus x4 plus x1. Yeah, you see that I 
I'm writing this down in a very particular way so that you recognize that actually this is a matrix vector product. This is a matrix vector product where the matrix is given by 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 1, 0, 0, minus 1 times the vector x. And the vector x with components x1, x2, x3, x4. So this matrix we will denote by A. So actually, this is a linear encoding in the sense that we obtain y as a transformation of x and a tra linear transformation of x which is done by left multiplication by a matrix A. So this type of encoding is a linear transformation. Now interestingly if you receive some code, or let's say you receive the code, the transformed code 9656, yeah, suppose your partner receives the code 9656, can she figure out what the original pin was? Actually, you need a key to do so, right? If she cannot figure out what the original pin was, this is a useless encoding. Well, in the next clip, we're going to find out whether this is, whether we can achieve this. So, solution to the question: Can we find the original code back, given that what is sent to us? Uh, we we are sent some given y, a given code. Can we solve for x, the original code that we actually need, uh, knowing that y is is transformed version of x, and this is a linear transformation, so y is the matrix times x. And suppose we know the matrix. Can we find the x back belonging to a given vector y? So we do a little bit more general, but we'll see that this works as well for a general y, just as a particular code that we received. So actually, we try to solve the system y is a x for x. So we set up here the augmented matrix where we suppose that we know y and on the left hand side we put a and we just perform the normal Gauss-Jordan elimination steps to receive and uh, to arrive at the um, reduced row e echelon form so we've created now a pivot and on position 1 1 and we try the second phase is that we try to make a pivot on 2 2 which obviously can be done. The only thing that we need to do is not only perform the right steps in the matrix A, but we need to keep track of the same operations in the latter column. Although we do not assume a particular value for the vector y, we can perform these calculations as you see. So now we have two pivots, we need two more ideally. So we can create a third one by sweeping column 3, creating zeros above and below position 3, 3. In order to do so we need to add row 3 to row 1. Subtract it from row 2 and subtract it from row 3. So actually we obtain plus y3 over here 
minus y3 over here, minus y3 over there. So now we bring the system back to the identity matrix on the left hand side by making minus 2 a pivot and we may do so by just dividing the last row by minus 2 and then adding the right multiples of rows we create zeros in the fourth column Here you see that the expression on the right hand side is slowly getting more complicated. You know, keep track of the minus signs. You usually make mistakes over there. Okay, now we're done. We have four pivots. So if we have four pivots, then we have actually a unique solution. So this this means that actually we may may recover our original code back from where we started. So if we start off with, if we receive some code Y, then the code we obtain is just here on the right hand side. That's the original code. So we may, may define a decoding for the encoding, which means that we can go back So here we just rewrite what is written here in the last column. This is the original coding. And we see that actually this is a matrix vector product. If we just take the coefficients over here and put it in a matrix, a new matrix, then over here there's a matrix vector product of a matrix with the vector y. So a half minus a half plus a half minus a half. So this is the matrix we obtain times the vector y. So actually we see that in order to find x back we need a matrix vector multiplication. So uh, this is an inverse. The inverse is a linear transformation as well. And it's called the inverse transformation for y is a times x. So if this is the matrix B, then we also denote it as the inverse of the matrix A.